This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Acer Iconia A500 10.1 inch Android tablet. It's just raining tablets here lately. And this one's claim to fame is pretty good build quality and nice specs at a very reasonable price point of $449. The A500 competes most directly with the Motorola Zoom Wi Fi 10.1 inch tablet rather than the Ryzen version because this guy has no 3G. So to make matters a little bit confusing, the box says A500, but if you do a check of the software status on this, it identifies itself as the A501, which will be the AT&T 3G version, and it has a SIM card slot, though Acer has put a piece of gray plastic tape over the slot to make sure you don't drop anything in there, because there's actually no SIM card receiver inside the slot, so if you drop it in there, you'll have a SIM card rattling around. Don't try it. Also, interestingly, it shows that power consumption is used by the Android operating system, as always, when it's idle, Wi-Fi, and cell standby, even though there is no 3G radio, at least there's no SIM card holder to put a SIM card in. Speaking of that, we'll take a look around the device, and see back here, this rather large plastic door pulls up, it's one of those little fiddly kind with the little plastic legs on it. We've taken the plastic off the SIM card slot over here, otherwise this gray plastic that matches the body, you might not even notice it at first. And this is the micro SD card slot, and golly gee, they beat Motorola on this. The micro SD card slot actually works. We're still waiting for a software update for the Motorola Zoom to add the SD card slot support. You've got a rotation lock switch right here. Your volume buttons. 5 megapixel camera with LED flash on the back. Takes okay shots. It's a nice aluminum back. It looks like a fairly quality piece. We've got some plastic on the edges, probably because the antenna is running under the edges. Stereo speaker grates right here. What we assume is a dock connector on the bottom for potential accessories. You can see it's a pretty slim unit, too. The case is also not quite together over there. There's a little gap in the case on that end, but very tight on this end here. And on this side, we've got a little reset hole. USB port with USB host, so you can plug in things like flash drives, which we've done. And yes, it does work. Really cool. Here's your micro USB port for syncing your power. On this side, you have micro HDMI out. Does 720p out with a software update from Google. We'll see 1080. Headphones, 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, your power button. So it's a nice looking tablet. It certainly doesn't look cheap or cheesy or anything like that. It's definitely one step up, more than one step up from some of the super budget ones we see at places like Fry's, say the Kobe tablet, and even nicer than the ViewSonic. You've got a 10.1 inch capacitive display here, 1280 by 800 resolution, which is pretty standard for 10.1 inch. And it's a nice sharp display that's almost, I'd say, identical to the Motorola Zoom. We'll compare them in a minute. In terms of sharpness and color saturation is good. This is at maximum brightness right now. If you're in a bright room, I would like it to go a little higher than it does. Other than that, there's certainly nothing wrong with the display. It's running Android 3.01 Honeycomb operating system. It's designed for tablets. It has 1 gig of RAM. A dual core Tegra 2 CPU. Standard stuff right there. Wi-Fi 802.11bgn. That's single band, 2.4 gigahertz. Doesn't have dual band like the Motorola Zoom. It has Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR. And it also has a front camera here for web conferencing, 2 megapixel. Now we're comparing the Acer A500 Android tablet on the bottom with the Motorola Zoom up top, both Android 3.01 Honeycomb tablets with 10.1 inch displays. You can see that the, the Acer is a bit wider, it has larger bezels on it. Uh, it. It costs a lot of money to miniaturize things, so one of the ways that Acer probably was able to make this more affordable is by not trying to squeeze down the size quite so much. In terms of thickness, they're both very similar. But the Acer looks thinner because it does what the iPad 2 does. It does that beveled edge kind of thing there that makes it look a lot slimmer. But if we look from that side, where the Motorola does have bevels, then the Acer suddenly looks fatter. But really, they're about the same. And now we're comparing the Iconia A500 on the bottom with the iPad 2 up top. Again, like the Zoom, the Iconia is longer across but otherwise they're fairly similar in size. Of course, the iPad is a bit thinner. And there's the side view. We do have a shell case on the iPad, but it adds very little thickness. Let's see from the side there. 
and the iPad is a bit lighter. The the Acer is surprisingly heavier than it feels like. It's a, about one pound twelve ounces. It's a, almost one point seven pounds, but it feels light. It actually feels lighter than the Motorola Zoom, even though it's heavier. Something about the balance of it. The Acer did a really good job with that. In terms of performance and value, the Acer A five hundred really wins. For four hundred and fifty bucks, you get a lot. Like I said, you got that dual core. Tegra 2 NVIDIA CPU and a gig of RAM, and it certainly is a fast enough tablet. Benchmark similarly to the Motorola Zoom, which has the same CPU, no surprise. It gets about 2040 on Quadrant, and it gets 41 on Linpack as well. And here we've got pretty much your, your basic vanilla honeycomb. So far, we're not really seeing any heavy customizations of honeycomb. I think Google doesn't really want it. What Acer has done is they've kind of created a custom backdrop folders for suites of applications. You see e-reading, games, multimedia, and social down here, and of course their clear.fi app, which is a streaming multimedia app we'll talk about later. We'll see what I'm talking about right here. You see, because it's e-reading, they've done a little background for that folder, basically. So you've got Google Books Access right here, and LumiRead. Now Acer makes LumiRead e-readers overseas, and that's where the name comes from. We'll take a look at that. And right now we're in the bookstore view. Now you've got links here to some free books or places that do offer free books and you can get them from there or you can shop in the store but not so much here. So there's no bookstore available in this region and if we current bookstore region selection is looks like Deutschland. Obviously that's Germany and I would assume that that is China. Oh well. If you download something from Feedbooks, in fact let's go do that. It should show up on our shelf. And this takes you. This keeps you in that contained environment over here. It's a web browser look, but you're still inside of the application. So let's find something free in the public domain section, and we'll grab a copy of Wuthering Heights. And no registration or anything required with eBooks, so you can just download it. And it says it's finished downloading it. So we'll go back to our bookshelf and see if it's there. And indeed, there it is. We've got cute page turn animations. Probably you're not going to want to read like this. Probably you're, you'd prefer to read in portrait mode. That's a much better presentation. The thing is awful long to hold. And in terms of settings, tap and hold here. You can change your font size. Right now it's pretty giant, so we're going to drop that down. And it handles that just fine. You can put bookmarks on here. You can go to the table of contents, for example. And also go to your bookmarks. There's a night mode over here. And that's pretty much it for features in this e-reader. Now you can sideload books into LumiRead, but what you need to do first is to down, download something from one of those free sources like Feedbook, so it creates a LumiRead directory on the internal flash storage area, and then you can put your sideloaded EPUB books into the LumiRead folder that's on the internal storage area. Likewise, you might be able to do this with an external micro SD card as well if you had one installed when you were running this. Either way, it should work. Speaking of sideloading, I should mention that with Android, you can just plug this into a Windows computer and it just mounts as a drive. If you're using a Mac, you have to download from Google a free application. It's Android File Transfer for Honeycomb products because the Mac can't see Android Honeycomb OS products without that little application, but that gives you the ability to then transfer files. No problem. Okay. Got Google Books over here. That's pretty much a known quantity that we've seen on other Android tablets. pretty presentation. We've got a couple of books here and this gives you a little bit more of a flashy looking layout. You can have your, your dual facing pages over here. You can change your font size. There is no side loading of books allowed in Google Books at this point. Unfortunately, I do hope they add that feature, but it's certainly attractive and if you want to get any of those two million or so public domain books or pay for books from the Google Bookstore, you can do that. In fact, the market has searched for both applications and books on the Honeycomb tablets. Take a look at multimedia. We've got photo browser. They've got their own photo browser on here. We've got Nemo Player, Video Player, uh, Streaming Radio, Usual YouTube, and Acer's Clear Dot 5, which we've also seen on things like the Acer Iconia 6120 Notebook. It's a, a streaming media player for streaming, say, inside your house. So let's take a look at the 3D photo browser. So this is Acer's 3D album, which uses the uh, accelerometer and multi-touch actually to control it's slightly complicated. You can see it has a little indicator up there that tells me I'm supposed to put two fingers on the screen. It looks like a cute book. Of course you can just use it normally but they're saying if you do 
that, <laughs> you can just turn your pages like so. Uh, it, okay, it's cute. I'm not sure that that's really much better than gallery in the end, but it also works here for showing photos and so on. I'll check out Nemo Player. Of course, you can play videos through gallery as well. And this has photos, music, and video. And that just gives you access to your photos yet again. If you go back, let's check out videos. And it shows you the movies. And we've got a full 1080 trailer on here, so we'll see how it handles it. And it is doing an absolutely terrible job of playing that 1080 trailer. How odd is that? Let's check out the gallery application and see how it does in standard Android gallery for playing that same video. So it is possible that other application was just a front end to gallery anyway. Not good. Hmm. Okay, now for comparison, here we have the same exact video playing on the Motorola Zoom and uh, playing just fine. You might see one or two frames drop here and there, but it's actually a fully animated video. Chalk up one for the zoom here. Well, that locally stored 1080p video didn't go too well, so let's just take a look at the Honeycomb YouTube player, which has, of course, a beautiful, glorious wall of monitors metaphor here, and we'll try playing something off of YouTube. really lovely interface here they have for Honeycomb with the related videos over here and information and controls. And this is streaming over Wi-Fi since it doesn't have 3G, 802.11n connection. doing better here. Of course, this is less demanding, but still it looks really nice, fills the screen, and the quality is good at high quality. Now I'll take a look at the web browser, which of course supports full flash, Adobe Flash 10.2, and we'll use the cool multitasking bar over here to select our browser from the list. And we'll visit our own website. And this is the standard on-screen keyboard you can see here. It comes with Honeycomb. No haptic feedback, but you do get auditory feedback. It's fast and responsive. We've got pinch zooming here, as you would expect. And we will take a little video review of the LG G Slate to see flash playback. So we've got our little flash player controls down here. And uh, with Honeycomb, the performance is very good on the dual core Tegra processors, but the controls don't exactly work real well yet. You've got the play button here if you want to use the resolution switching. Mm -hmm. It's not really there yet. And it plays at 360p when embedded, and it'll go up to 480 if we choose full screen, and you can't control that. Just get the real switch to full screen. And available now on T-Mobile. This is T-Mobile's higher-end Honeycomb Android tablet, the Dell Streak 7 that we reviewed back in the And that works just fine, too. 
So there you have a plus versus the iPad too. Obviously, you get to play real Flash on this, which is nice. And also, the, the, the browser is excellent. We've got a tab browser here. You can switch between your tabs quite easily. Performance is very good. It's a very desktop-like experience. Now we're going to take a look at gaming. There's a couple of games pre-installed on here, and we've got Heroes of Sparta HD, and we also have Need for Speed. We'll take a look at Heroes of Sparta. It's a hack and slash game. So it's starting off with the, with the cutscene here. It's not the highest quality cutscene I've ever seen, but how much does that matter? It doesn't. The game graphics look pretty good. And we'll skip through the rest of that. So really nice looking graphic. Very fluid gameplay. Once again the NVIDIA Dual Core Tegra 2 CPU with GPU. Very nice. Now we're in Need for Speed Shift here, and we're doing our training run. Nice graphics, good sound. Very easy to control with the accelerometer. The HR Iconia has a 3260 milliamp battery that's sealed inside. It doesn't pop out like it does on a cell phone, for example. And we're still putting it through our battery test, but so far it looks like battery life should probably be on part with the Motorola Zoom, that is to say maybe seven hours. So our unit seems to have a little bug where it keeps waking itself up and turning the screen on, and even after hard resetting it twice, it's still doing that. We assume that's just a fluke with this particular unit. It also has a GPS that works with Google Maps, and you can use the webcam with Google Talk for video chatting, and it performed pretty well in our test for that. Now there's of course a lot more to the unit that we can even cover here, so be sure to visit Mobile Tech Review to read our full review. And I'm Lisa, and this is the Acer Iconia A500 10.1 inch Android tablet, available now at Best Buy and other places for $449.